that is absolutely amazing. It's hard to see because it's moving so slowly. <clears throat> oh, here you can see it. See how it's like... It's moving like water would. I mean, obviously it is water, but... like coming over the ridge enveloping enveloping this side of the ridge very slowly in the way of like a waterfall or like you know I don't know it's so weird looking and it's I love how just one thing in, about Appalachia that I've never seen anywhere else I mean, granted, I've not been a ton of places. I've not been everywhere around the world. But, um, in Appalachia, you get the fog like this. And it moves through the valley. So many kitties. Let me show you the garden today. What special things we've got. So all this has gone out of flower. Well, a couple things. This new sedum is going into flower. Look at it. Oh, it's so cute. And we've got some snapdragons and some alyssum. But this is the crowning glory up here this fall. It's the seashell cosmos. Aren't they the most gorgeous things ever? Look at them. So we've got white and pink up here. Look at how beautiful. Oh my gosh. I did not anticipate these um, getting this big, but I love that they did. Now you could see also we've got some marigolds and this um, passion flower vine. Look at it. It's totally taken over this whole thing. And then also down here we have my hydrangea, strawberry vanilla hydrangea. It's already turning its pink color. Look, oh, I can't believe how quick this summer went. And then we look down here, look how beautiful that looks. With the, re with the red bush, the green, and then the bright green and the yuccas. This is the other hydrangea. Uh, it's a lot more behind than that one, obviously, but that's because I had to move it. Okay. Oh, shoot. Down here, we got some pumpkins. Rose is getting ready to bloom. Aster's getting ready to bloom. Uh, you can see how big 
the hibiscus got and the lilac. And in fact, the lilac is blooming again this morning. Look. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite things to do. Oh yeah, oh god, this smells so good. Over here, we've got this big stand of mint that has just went crazy. Um, and there's some red clover down in there. One of my miniature roses getting ready to bloom. Zinnias. My... Um, what you, I can't remember what that's called. Okay, you can look through here. Look how big these Mexican sunflowers are and the bees and the butterflies, like I've told you before, absolutely love this plant. Down here we got sweet potatoes. I learned that, that you can eat the leaves of these sweet potatoes and they are anti-cancer. So, you know, just food for thought. I've been eating them like I, like I eat greens. Like I cook them the same way I cook like collard greens or um, mustard greens. <clears throat> and they're really delicious. Oh, the crows have spotted me. Watch. Um, over here, look at this. Do you hear that? This is a male marijuana plant, but I don't know if it's a male because it's got these little flowers. Like, obviously the bees are pollinating something. It's got little flowers on it. Strange. They love it. You can hear there's like all the bees in the garden. They're at this plant. <laughs> we have an Armenian cucumber doing its thing. We got lots of peppers here, you could see. Hot peppers. And then we have a green pepper, some jalapenos, mustard. Look at my tomatoes. Look how beautiful they are. We got one, two, three, four, five tomatoes on this plant. You chin boy? You chin boy. Over here, we've got lots of stuff. St. John's wort getting bigger. Dahlia, the little dahlia. Oh, look, we have our first flower on this zinnia right here. Look how beautiful. Let's go up here so I can show you these cosmos that are just amazing. The patchouli looking beautiful. So up here. So you guys, if you remember, last year I planted um, a cosmo in this garden over here. And I did not expect the plant that emerged from the ground it topped out about eight feet tall which I wasn't expecting and I collected seed from that plant and that's what these are right here all these really tall ones <clears throat> so I kind of staggered their planting which is why they're not all blooming at the same time we've got um, silver edge pumpkins I had to put this up here so the deer would stop eating the leaves. So you can see we got echinacea, we got dahlias, pumpkins, cosmos. We got some rhubarb down here, which I found that if when I cover it with all these other plants, it does better. It did not like being 
um, fully out in the sun. But look at all these zinnias. I'm so happy I planted all of these. They're so beautiful and they make me so happy to look at. Down here we've got some oregano, some mugwort, some yarrow, some daylilies mixed in, and this little bush. I don't know what kind of bush that is, I forgot. Got some corn mixed in. Interesting, that's like facing away. And then up here, we've got the red dahlias with the orange dahlias that have not put on any blooms this year so far. So I don't know what's going on there. So you can see, oh, there's a, there's a passion flower. Oh, do you guys see it? Look, there is a passion flower vine right there. And that's gotta be the native kind because oh my gosh um because i didn't plant that <gasps> which means that's a maypop and you guys you see how much i've been telling people that when you talk about things out loud in your yard about the plants that you want they will show up on your property they absolutely will look at this you see that that's so exciting. Which means there might be. See, look right here. It is. Look. <gasps> that's the. That's the Maypop. Look, it's all over up here. <gasps> look, you guys. We've got one. Oh my gosh. Do you see it? That's a Maypop fruit. That's one. <gasps> I cannot believe we are discovering this together. This is so exciting. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's all over this bush right here. I'm so glad I did not chop all this stuff down. Look. I can't believe it. Okay, let's get it it looks like it's ripe oh my gosh this is so exciting this is what I'm t I try to tell people this if you ask out loud and tell mother nature the plants that you want and and you know what you want to do I've been talking about maypops all freaking year come to find out they're growing in my backyard oh my god Look, they're everywhere over here. This is so freaking exciting. I wonder if there's any more. I'll have to come up here and give it another good look. But oh my gosh. I'm so happy to see this. So cool. It, I swear it works. It's magic. I mean, it's like magic, but it's not. It's just how the world works. Like, you ask for things, and they, you will get them. They will show up. Like, I was talking about I wanted more Rose of Sharon. And that one right here, this Rose of Sharon popped up right here. This one popped up in my garden. Um, like, you know, it's just stuff like that. If you talk about it, it will show up. And I am so excited for this. Hey, y'all. I was up on the hill looking around. Um, and I found another Maypop. Oh, my gosh. I feel so... I've not felt this much joy and I don't know how long. <laughs> um, I'm just so, like I knew this is, this is exactly like the situation where it's like, I'm hearing in my head to have faith. Have faith. If you ask for something, have faith that it's gonna show up. 
That's what I'm hearing because you guys, the, the, for the longest time I've been talking about May Pops. May Pops, and I wanted to find them, and I was out, you know, traipsing through the woods trying to look for May Pops, and I never ever could find them. And in about one year, now you gotta give the universe some time. You can't just be like, I want this, and expect it to pop up right then and there because you will be sorely disappointed. But if you give it like a year, you know, you're gonna find what you want and what you need. I cannot believe this is happening to me today. I'm so fucking excited, you guys. Okay, so let's go cut these open together. Yo, Tim boy. Okay, so let's cut this. This is when I when I pulled this second one off the plant, it just kind of ripped. So they feel really light. They don't smell like anything. Yo jeez. Yo chin. Okay, so here we go. Look. Oh my god, how cool. Do you see that? Shush, you just. You see that? Let me do some research real quick. Okay, so I looked it up and it said that this plant, Passiflora incarnata, is the scientific name. It's actually good for like chilling, like giving you the ability to chill out. Like it's, it helps with anxiety. It helps with menstrual pains. It helps with, um, sleep, sleep aid. So let's try it. Weird. Okay. So here's the seed. So these are like, it's very citrusy. I'm trying to place the flavor. Is it citrus? Mmm. Almost like a pomegranate. It almost has like the same like type of sourness and like bite. Like a, um... A pomegranate wood, which is actually interesting because, like, you know how on the inside of a pomegranate, there's like that weird film over the seeds? It seems to be the same thing inside of this. So each seed is very, very lightly, um, you can hear it, it's very lightly connected to the whole. And it's just a little bit of juice inside the, um, a little bit of juice inside. That's really good. And that's amazing. <coughs> this is growing in my backyard. I feel so, one, amazed. I feel lucky. I feel blessed that this showed up. So see, there's almost like a, So you, it's almost like the same thing as the inside of like a any other type of citrus fruit where it's like that pithy weird stuff and then all of the seeds you can see trypophobia awareness look look at that that's so strange 
You know? So strange looking. Isn't it? I didn't. I'm not. Now just slowly on the gas. Okay. Stay on the road here. Oh, I'm so Really? Yeah. Okay, well, what we're going to do, we're going to go to the church parking lot and then we'll have you turn around and come back down. So just slowly. drive on this side of the road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in Britain. Careful. Okay, now stop. Go up a little further. Oh wait, hold on. Stop. Stop. With these people.